the gym. My old stomping grounds. <laughs> Hank Patterson, fly fishing guide. Riley Smith, tight end. Yeah, I appreciate that. Hey, you wouldn't happen to be the kicker. No, tight end. Again, thank you. I'm looking for a kicker for Lithia Ford's fall kickoff sale. But you're not the kicker. No. Yeah. Now nah, the kicker's probably taller. In a lot better shape, so... Okay. What uh, position do you play? Tight end. Squats. Yeah. Try it sometime. I may be retired, but I still have finances to manage. With direct deposit and automatic payments, ICCU makes it easy to spend less time banking and more time baking. RowPaint.com, the official paint and coatings company of Boise State Athletics, is going all in this season with an all-star lineup. First up, he led the Broncos to three conference championships and 10 20-win seasons. It's Coach Leon Rice. Next, he's the founder and CEO of RowPaint.com. He played a little basketball in high school on the driveway with his mom. It's Andy Rowe. Oh, no. Want to just paint my house? Now that I can do. When I want Boise State to win, I trust Coach Rice to lead the Broncos to victory. And when I want the best painting and garage floor coating, I trust RowPaint.com to get that job done right. Time for the Tyson Degenhardt Show with Boise State basketball star Tyson Degenhardt, sponsored by Idaho Central Credit Union. Find a branch near you or get more information at ICCU.com. Here's Tyson Degenhardt with B.J. Rains for another edition of the Tyson Degenhardt Show on Bronco Nation News. Hey, how we doing? Happy Tuesday night to everybody out there. Welcome on into episode 10 already of the Tyson Degenhardt Show. Uh, yeah, we've been talking a lot of football the last couple of days. We're going to talk some basketball on tonight's show. Uh, really excited for this. Happy to be back with this guy. I don't really recognize him, though. Uh, you're not wearing the mask. Yeah, I, I'm not. I, I just try to wear it at practice yeah, I, so, just I, so I don't have it at home. Your uh, internet's a little spotty there, uh, uh, Tyson, so we may uh, have you uh, r- leave and come back in or something. I don't know what you want to do, uh, Tyson. Your internet's a, a little... Uh, yeah, I'll leave real quick. Shot. All right, Tyson's going to uh, come back in. Uh, Max Rice is getting ready. We're going to have him join us uh, momentarily. We got Duke, Michigan State on the other monitor here, but uh, the, the real game's coming up in a few minutes, Kansas and Kentucky. Uh, but uh, love early season college basketball and uh, we're pretty excited for tonight's show. We got uh, Max Rice is going to join us. We got Roberto Burgess in the assistant coach, and then uh, Sam Winter going to wrap up the show as well. So it should be a, a fun show tonight. Tyson, how are we doing? Uh, I'm good. How are you? Is it is it better now? Yes, that's better. That's that okay, is better. Perfect. Well, perfect. tell us uh, your early thoughts on the uh, two games so far, and what it was like getting back out there on Sunday. Uh, it was definitely hard to just sit on the bench on, on Tuesday. I hadn't missed a game. I'm, I hadn't missed a high school game. I hadn't missed a game until, since eighth grade. So it was a little hard to sit on the bench, but I was excited for our, our guys to get out on the floor and get to bond and just get to play together against someone else other than ourselves. And uh, I think we made some great strides defensively against Vanguard. And then we took another couple steps against San Francisco. And 
uh, really happy with our effort on Sunday. Now, a lot of folks are disappointed here. You're not wearing the mask for the interview. Uh, I unfortunately forgot it at the facility today. Uh, it just kind of slipped through my mind. So uh, maybe I'll have it for the next one. We'll, there we'll you go. What, uh, tell us about what happened with that and what kind of led to that and, and uh, how long are you going to have to wear it and stuff? Uh, yeah, so it was Halloween and just took an inverted elbow. And um, you can kind of see it, it hit what, this way. It's a little crooked that way, but um, – you know, happened at an unfortunate time, but uh, to only miss one game is, is pretty good. So um, I'm not going to complain. And as long as I, I have something to protect my face, you know, I'm really happy to be on the court. Well, uh, let's we'll uh, get to Max Rice here in just a second. Looking forward to starting the show. But uh, tell us about our title sponsor here, ICCU. Yeah, ICCU, as you see, I, I got the card control on my debit card. So whenever I need to, I can turn it on and off to not allow people to, to steal my money and uh Really thankful for ICCU to be a sponsor of this show, and uh, I'm happy to be a part of their their ad now. So if you go on their website, you might see a picture of me here and there with the with the card control. So uh, just very thankful for them to for allowing us to have this show. Before we uh, get to Max, man, tell us what it's like to, to get been getting to know Max the last couple of years and his family, and and uh, just uh, you know uh, we've it's been a while, ten episodes here. We're happy to finally get him on, but uh, tell us about Max. Yeah, he's been asking me a lot. He's like, when am I going to be on the show? I'm like, you're on the list, man. Like, you just got to wait. And so uh, to have him on episode 10 is pretty cool. And uh, it's just been awesome to get to know Max because he's probably the the guy that – he's actually the guy that coached me at Elite Camp when I came back here in 2019, which seems like forever ago. And he's still here playing. So don't know how he managed to make that happen, but happy to have him here for this year. And we're going to go out with a bang this year. He's laughing in the background already, so let's not waste any more time. We'll play a 15-second commercial here for ICCU, and then when we come back, it's one-on-one -on -one Tyson Degenhart and Max Rice coming up here on the Tyson Degenhart Show. Hey, Forrest here. Nothing like getting paid. And with ICCU's mobile app, I can deposit checks or accept Zelle payments so the money hits my account fast. I just wish there was an app for mowing the rest of these wands. And now I uh, just want to introduce... Uh, you were second team last year, right? I think so, Deggy. It's yeah, good to second, see you again, though, man. Second team all Mountain West last year. Open, definitely a first teamer this year, uh, Max Rice. Just want to thank you for being on the show tonight. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's been a long wait, but I think it's going to be worth it, man. How many times do you think you asked me to come on the show? Uh, a couple. I thought I'd get at least top three in, in your first three shows, but. To get a double-digit number is just – it hurt me a little bit, but I'm just glad I'm here. You're on a milestone episode. This is the first double-digit. We hit, hit double right. digits tonight, so I think you should feel honored to be on number 10. All right. I like that. That's positive. I like it. That's good. Yeah. So, so uh, what are your thoughts on the first two games? I mean, obviously, we're 2-0. and um, Played a really good opponent in San Francisco on Sunday. We played Vanguard the fall, past Tuesday. What are your thoughts, uh, you know, two games in? Yeah, just uh, I think Vanguard was a great tune-up for that for that game against San Francisco just because we could get our feet under us a little bit. And I think you felt it just missing that first game for you. I could see like it took a couple minutes for you to get going uh, and get your feet under you after a long preseason. But um, so far, I think the scheduling is perfect just because in the previous years, I feel like we've played teams who kind of um, run their stuff really well. And we played them early like uh, last year. And just I'm glad this year we've gotten to play more of a schedule that leads into our um, our tough stretch coming up here. So, yeah, I think, you know, San Francisco was a great game for us to get ready to go on this this East Coast swing and just have a team that really executes. And we got to really lock in defensively. And uh, I think Clemson will probably get a challenge for us. Uh, what, what do we what do we know about them? I, know you uh, watched them a little bit. I don't know much. Yet, but I watched the first half of the Davidson game, and I know they had some early struggles. They were down twenty-two to two, and uh, just the be able, the ability to be able to come back in that game is, was was impressive to me. Um, they got a couple veteran guys in Joey Gerard. I know I watched him a couple years ago at Syracuse. He's a, a big time shooter, and then they got uh, PJ Hall. I think you you got your hands full with him. He's a a good young player as well. So. Uh, yeah, they got they got talent, they got size, so it's going to be a battle. Um, it could be a great road win for us. Absolutely. Have you ever been to to Clemson before? I don't think so. I think it's my first time, maybe. If I can remember that long back, I don't. I don't remember Gonzaga ever uh, played Clemson. If I'm, I might be <laughs> mistaken. These comments or huh? 
I honestly have no idea. Um, could be a Utah State fan for all we know. That's a um, good point. Do you want to tell the the viewers about uh, the whole Mountain West Conference post and the in the comment section? Uh, yeah, I can run them through it really quick. Yeah, just give them a quick rundown uh, of what happened. Yeah, so there was just a small picture of us on the on the edit, and all of a sudden my phone just starts blowing up, and I click it, and it has like two hundred and fifty "I hate Max Rice" comments. Um, and I'm pretty sure I know who the culprit is. Just Utah State fans who. Just we don't get along, but it's a it's a love hate relationship depending on the time of the year. But um, yeah, they just blew up the post, and I think they muted the comments, which is pretty soft to the Mountain West. But uh, <laughs> it was something. Definitely, the comments were starting to go crazy, so maybe it was a good decision. What what caused this tension between you and Utah State? I don't remember there was ever an instance where you did something to you know make them mad or anything, or did they just kind of come after you since you're coach's kid or something no, like that. I think it's just yeah I think they were just born to hate me honestly um and then it's just grown over the years I think I've played them so many times that they're probably just it's like hanging out with your family too much it's just not what you want to do you just get sick of them fast so um yeah it's a, it's a bit of a rivalry and I'm excited to go down there and play uh just just to play in front of all of them Absolutely. So kind of want to go back a little bit. Let's talk about last year. Uh, you took a really big step forward. Um, your production went up. Uh, I think one of the reasons it um, happens is because you're actually healthy. Uh, would you agree? Like, because you're obviously coming off the hip surgery two years ago. You had a, a foot injury. You know, you have your back a little messed up. Like, I think last year you were finally healthy for the first time, and I think it really showed. Um. Yeah, sorry, I'm reading the comments as we go. But uh, yeah, I think you're spot on with that. Just I don't think you realize how much you're hurting until you're actually healthy. And looking back on last year, I wasn't even close to um, being healthy. And honestly, it probably wasn't even the best decision to play last year, looking back on it. But uh, getting through that was huge. And starting Pilates and doing all that was also big for me. Uh, and it just, uh, just feels great to be healthy. Absolutely. So uh, part of this, these comments are uh, incredible. So just, just keep, you know, keep commenting. Uh, we always love uh, seeing what people comment. Um, Appreciate so, that one. Yeah. Derek said Utah state fans don't like Max because of the five game losing streak he had on him. I yeah, appreciate that. Derek, good chatter. Um, tag him, tag him in the comments. So I want to, part of the show is just to like get to know you a little bit more. So I want to ask you about your upbringing um because your dad was a coach i think i think you were born in yakima so kind of tell us about your upbringing how you were born in eastern washington and ended up in boise idaho yeah so i was born in the same uh hospital as cooper cup uh in yakima and then i moved to spokane when i was i think younger than one uh when leon got the job at gonzaga watched a bunch of good teams make runs in the tournament and that's kind of what inspired me to play college basketball and just want to do the same uh, and then moved to Boise when I was going into fifth grade and uh, saw like the peak of that football program uh, so far, at least, and just saw the community in Boise. And that's kind of what made me fall in love with Boise State. And I just wanted to be a Bronco ever since then. And then I've just had this this nice college run. And now we're here. Yeah. Um, Max Rice. Quentin says Max Rice will be the Mountain West player year. I, I, can, I can definitely see that. You know, he's one of those guys that can really get it going and make such a big impact on our team. Thanks, Nate Wilder, shout out to Nate. I saw him on TV a couple nights ago at the football game. So yep. he's always one of our uh, biggest fans. Jacob's saying, talking about your back to back threes. Um, Appreciate it, Jacob. Dude, the comment section is hot right now. I like it. I know. Uh, you, you're bringing a lot of comments. This is great. Yeah, we like uh, it. Want to bounce back to Gonzaga. Is there like a memory of one of those like sweet 16 teams that you can remember. Cause I've, I know you were young, but something that you really remember about being yeah, something there. I really remember uh, both good and bad. The good one was a, a game against Western Kentucky. I think they hit a three to tie it. And Dimitri Goodson uh, was on Gonzaga at the time. He ended up playing in the NFL for the Green Bay Packers. They gave it to him with four seconds left. He drove the length of the floor, a little floater off the glass to win it. I remember that one. That one was awesome. Uh, and then bad memory, I had um, when Curry, I think, dropped 35 to beat us. Um, and he kind of just spazzed at the end to 
to kind of put us away. And then I think they ended up going to the Elite Eight that year. Uh, so those those are some memories that stick out to me. Kareem's asking if you've ever been to Miner's Burger and Fries. One time, yeah, and it was very filling, super good. I think that's the spot down there. Yeah, uh, I played a couple of tournaments in Yakima, and I do remember going there. I remember it being very good, so definitely need to go back. Robbie, and you have the same Robbie, birthday. I like that. Let's go August birthdays, Leo's. Uh, Derek's asking if you have a favorite win over Utah State. Any win over Utah State is my favorite win of that year for sure. So uh, got them twice this year. So in a span of two weeks, so I'm pretty sure that's going to be an eventful two weeks on uh, social media and on the court. Do you remember uh, two years ago when that picture, I think it was in the Idaho press of the, the whiteboard. You remember that picture where it said, okay, congrats, Max Rice on your career high two points. Yep. Yeah, the guy in the front row with the whiteboard, he was a menace. Um, hey, we're back on Utah State. The- it always <laughs> comes back. Uh, and then last year they had like 10 to 15 posters, I feel like, in the stands. And one of them I was like was doing weird stuff. Like they edited it, so it was weird. I don't even know, man. But Didn't they, didn't they find your mom's like Instagram posts and find some young pictures of you? Yep, I told her to go private. Uh, me and Kay did after that game, but it doesn't matter. So she's, I guess she's still public. It's all I, out there. The one thing I, I do respect about Utah State the students is they do their research. They find some stuff and uh, they will find a picture, an embarrassing picture, and they will put it on posters and, you know, have it everywhere. So kind of got to tip my hat to them. They do. Uh, they do have a great student section and uh, I'll give them, I'll give them that. Uh, Kip is asking, how good are you at sensing when you're about to heat up and rain some threes? Uh, that's a good question. I think you kind of saw it a little bit in that 19 second span last game. I feel like when I make one, that's when I feel like I'm the hottest. Like, uh, I, Deggy, I think you did a good job because you got me the ball right after I hit that first one. And then I hit the second one and credit to their coach. I think uh, he called the timeout right after that. And then I felt cooled down a little bit again. But um yeah, I feel like once I make one, the rim feels a lot bigger. So, yeah. Point. Well, I think you always find a way to to get open when the when the ball's getting moving, and especially on free throws. I remember a couple of times the past couple of years, I get a free throw rebound, I kick it out to you. It's a three, and it goes in ninety percent of the time. And on free throw rebound, don't give away always, our strategy. You you always find your way to the ball. Yeah. Hey, never know. Uh, what yeah. is your your background there behind you? That's it's just a little uh it's a little pony that I think B-Man painted, maybe. Looks good to me. Uh <laughs> Quentin is asking if you think BK will win the 4A football championship against Hillcrest this weekend. They're in the 4A state championship. Wow. I did not they know. They beat that. uh Julian's team last weekend. Yes, I did know that, but I didn't know they were in the championship. Good for them. Uh yeah, I'm gonna predict a 28-21 victory a uh, little fourth quarter touchdown to win the game in the state championship uh, jacob i don't think that was a, a michael reverse layup uh i don't think i'm nearly close to being able to do that but i, I do appreciate it um, i like these comments man. this comment okay. section has been great so just keep getting your comments in i got max on for another seven or eight minutes so uh, i do want to ask you about your recruiting process and i know you had mentioned like since your dad was the coach here, um, you always wanted to be a Bronco. Was there any other schools that were recruiting you um, that you really thought about going to? Yeah. Uh, well, when you think about it, you usually get offers about sophomore, junior year of high school. So it's hard for me to recall some of a lot of them. But um, I always remember Sam Scholl. He was at San Diego at the time. He was always really good to me, uh, even though he knew I was probably going to go to Boise State, which mo- most coaches uh, knew that. So they didn't recruit me as hard or or bring me on visits, but he was always great to me. And I uh, always felt like that would have been a good spot for me as well in San Diego. So shout out coach Scholl for, uh, for being a great recruiter. Absolutely. And then talk a little bit about your high school experience, like how that kind of made you into the player you are. You had some incredible high school stats and a great run at BK and a couple state championship appearances. Talk a little bit about that. Uh, yeah, no, BK was awesome. Uh, coach Pachi Kearns was a great high school coach and, um, uh, we made a couple great runs, always stopped in the state championship by Preston. Uh, they had a bunch of division one players and, and a couple great NAIA players as well. So they were kind of our uh, rival every year. And 
uh, they were a well-coached team as well. And every, every year we met them, we had a battle. One year we were up 18 uh, in the second half with no shot clock, and they still managed to come back somehow. So I uh, don't want to watch the film on that one. Uh, JD's asking, what Mountain West coach besides Leon do you really like or hate? This is a great question because great we, question. Actually, we actually went to media day about a month ago, and we actually got to talk to a lot of the coaches. So this is very fresh in our memory. Yeah, uh, I don't want to say any that I hate because I, I think they're all good guys. Uh, there's a couple that are more standoffish than others. Not many. There's two, <laughs> two to be exact. But uh, yeah, I, I really like Patino. I think Patino's a great guy. Uh, Dutcher, super nice guy. Um, who am I forgetting? Deggy, who do you like? Well, I remember we talked to uh, Linder a little bit. Oh yeah, Linder's like family. Yeah, good. Linder's been in the BSU. Uh, talked to Alford for a little bit. I know you and him have a connection that we'll get to in a minute. Um, yeah. Who else? I mean, Coach Medved from Colorado State's always friendly. Um, hey, don't name them all because then they'll know who's. I'm not gonna. I'm not. That's not. That's the end of the list. But. Um, oh wow! I mean, we had a great picture. That was from I think two years ago. No, that maybe? was last year. That was last year. Yeah, that was last year. That's a that's, that's a good something. picture. That's a nice little sign. I've I've been Is that you? Are you running the edits behind that? I am not. That's BJ running the edits. So oh, BJ, okay. We'll yeah, BJ's that. behind the scenes. Um, yeah, I heard okay. Cade is better than Max. That's definitely Cade's fake like uh, name or something. It might be. I I don't even know who that is. But uh, Matt Matthew's asking, what do you think the atmosphere at the X is going to be like come conference play? I think it's going to be crazy, to be honest, uh, just having that many people in a November game that uh, not many people like know of San Francisco to be that good, even though they, they were really good so far this year. Uh, I think for conference games, it's going to be terrific. Best in school history, I think. What do you think, Peggy? I think we're going to have probably the most sellouts we've ever had. I mean, we had um, one two years ago, then three last year. I think we can get up to, you know, five or six with how good this conference is going to be and um, I mean, this is just scratching the surface. We had our first game of 10,000 fans and in a November game, which is incredible. And um, I just the support from Bargo Nation has been incredible. So thank you yeah. all for that. Uh, Gerald, do you think the defense will be better this year than last year? Uh, I think we have potential that that team two years ago was our best defensive team. Yeah. We basically like uh, Leon would always say we would punt on offense just to get back on defense because we were that good. Uh just because we had big guards like Abu and Eman and all those big guys. And Maladin was a great defender. Last year, I think we had a little bit of slippage near the end. So this year, I do think we're going to be better defensively. Uh, and you kind of saw that in our last game. Like we would uh, – coming down the stretch, we felt great about just getting stops, even up five. Um, so I, I think we're going to be better defensively. I think we definitely have the capability to be a, a really good defensive team. Uh, JD's asking if you should keep if you should keep yelling at the refs. Uh, as long as you're not getting teed up, I'm I'm cool with it. Uh, I'm with you there. Uh, you know, co comment section. Keep getting in your questions. We got Max for a little bit longer. Um, Chris is asking, can we kick a field goal as good as Roddy? Um, my answer is no. I cannot kick it. I can kick a short field goal, but not like Roddy. No, Roddy's got some special out there. He's. I think he would have been a Division One football player if he didn't. Uh, play basketball so i cannot i can probably kick a 20 30 yarder at most yeah it's, that's right about my range uh quentin's asking what game do you think that will be a tough matchup this year uh i think the one i'm probably most looking forward to is that 11 o'clock tip at home against San Diego state just because it's on cbs and that's a pretty much a prime time to be on cbs at one o'clock eastern against a really good team uh I think it's going to be a lot of people are going to watch it, and that's always a good battle. Absolutely. You know, any chance you can get to play San Diego State, it's, it's always great. And Tex is asking, how different does this team feel compared to last year's? Uh, looks like the new guys are fitting in really well. Uh, yeah, I think you said it right there in your, uh, in your comment. Um, yeah, we all have great chemistry, and they all bring different things that we didn't really have last year, just depth and then – all sorts of things. I think you saw it last game too with Keen just coming off the bench, getting that O board on a free throw. That's huge two points that we stole right there. And we only won by what five. So that was huge. And then we got just more depth at every position. Omar coming off the bench. I think you've already seen the impact he can make. 
uh, just having that weapon off the bench is huge for us. And then we haven't made shots. We haven't made free throws. We haven't, there's a lot of things we can get better at and we're trying to clean that up for this game Sunday. Yeah. Uh, Kip's asking, what's Andrew Meadow like? Um, he's kind of like, uh, a really advanced robot. <laughs> you gotta explain that. that. He's like, he doesn't do anything out of the ordinary, but like, you know, you feel like you know exactly what he's going to do. What do you think he's like, Deggy? I mean, he's just so uh, dedicated to the game. Like he's always in the gym. He's always shooting. He's always doing something to make himself better. And um, mm -hmm. so it's just really nice to have a guy on, on your team like that, that know that's, that's grinding and, you know, continuing to get better. So. Yeah, Love he's, a, he's a born scorer. I don't think you've seen that yet in uh, any of our games just because we've been kind of missing lately. But once he makes one or two, it's it's going to be good. He's going to start heating up too. So I think you'll see that in the coming weeks. Absolutely. So, uh, Max, as we wrap up here a little bit, um, I, I do ask this question to every guest that we have on the show. Um, and it's just kind of get to know you on a, on a deeper level. And uh, the question is, like, who in your life has made the biggest impact on you besides your close family and friends? Um, biggest impact on just my life or on basketball or on anything? E either or. Uh, B-Man's raising his hand in the background. He wants me to say him. But uh, biggest impact, I would say, I think, I mean – I'm on the Tyson Dagenhart show. Uh, I could give you a little shout out just because I, <laughs> why are you shaking your head? You don't have to, I don't, I'm sure there's someone that's made a bigger impact than me. Uh, a bigger impact. Let me think. Um, I had, I had a coach growing up that made a huge impact on me. His name was Terrence Green. He was my AU coach and he, he low key pushed me to be uh better and low-key become a division one player just because the way he pushed me at a young age i knew i wanted to play college basketball and he kind of showed me what it's like to compete and be great um so shout out coach green for for being a great coach growing up that's great was he was he a spokane guy uh, no he was hoop dreams out of boise oh hoop dreams that's that's right up Berto's alley yeah uh, yeah exactly so uh, keep getting your comments in. We got a little bit more time with uh, with Max. Um, I don't. Let's see. They're they're asking if RJ Keen's a, a good teammate. That was one of them. What do you think about that? Uh, yeah, he's a great teammate. I mean, he does all the little things. He's really good at setting flare screens. <laughs> he, just, he just does all the little things right. That's that's how I think. He just does all the dirty work and. Uh, you know, it may not show up in the statue, but he definitely makes an impact on the game. Yeah, and he's a funny guy. It's good. He makes time pass a little faster when you're getting yelled at by Bernie every day and <laughs> you just want to quit basketball. He keeps it going. Uh, do you practice those paint moves at the local part, Max? I love them. I appreciate that, Kay Foster. Uh, no, last year I just – I don't know. I couldn't really move very well, so – at some points I would just like throw it up and I think I was getting lucky a lot last year and this year I'm trying to really make real moves. Dude, what's the point? Oh, good here's guy. a good question. Chase is asking, why don't you call Leon dad when talking to the media? This is a good question. Oh, uh, I think I called him dad one time in a game and people just looked at me, uh, looked at me kind of weird and I don't know. I just didn't feel right. So, <laughs> Uh, I don't want to call him dad or really coach. So I just call him Leon or yeah, it works for me. And then I saw a free throw question pop up. Uh, yeah. We've been shooting a lot better uh, from the free throw line in practice than in games right now. And it's a small sample size. Like uh, we're, we've been working me and day. You're going to try to switch that ball, that game ball we've been using um, Tom Brady a, a little bit. It's a little pumped up for our liking. Lisa's asking what sport you would have played if you didn't choose basketball and does Bernie yell at you the most? Well, yeah, when I've, I've been around Bernie the longest. So like when I make a mistake, he feels comfortable with just screaming at me, which he does with everyone. But uh, you know how I play Lisa a little bit. I gamble a little too much. So um, if I, you saw that last game a little bit too. So uh, I just need to know when to take those opportunities a little better. BSU's Bill is asking how much protein does Buzo take? On a daily basis, 
Uh, I'm going to say BSU Bill is a burner for Buzo. Uh, it's, his, it's his burner account but no he has gotten a lot bigger just the other day we had practice at noon i think on a sunday and buzo didn't even know it so my brother saw him lifting at axiom 20 minutes before practice so we had to send him a text and get him down to practice so yeah he's been committed to getting bigger uh, for sure and then derek's asking uh you mentioned ryan watkins was giving you a ton of love on twitter is there a bronco alum from your junior high, high school days that you still keep in touch with? Uh, that's a great question. I keep in touch with a lot of them. Uh, I really liked Derek Marks was was a inspiration to me just because he was averaging like 30 points a game in conference and kind of backpacking that team. Uh, but there's a lot of them. Anthony Drimmick, Thomas Bro play. Uh, yeah, Wadi. I love Wadi. He was a he was a beast down low. And then a lot of people forgot about this guy, but Trey Nichols. I always loved watching Trey Nichols. He was kind of a microwave. Can we pull up some Trey Nichols highlights, Deggy? Might need to. So, uh, Max, and any final thoughts for uh, before you, you get you off the show? Uh, ask Berto some good questions. I'll be tuned in from my phone. That's my All mind. right. Well, Max, uh, thank you for joining. Really appreciate it. We had a great comment section, so thank yeah, you for tuning awesome. in. And uh, Thanks for joining. I'm glad to have you on on episode uh, 10. Ask Berto who his GOAT all-time greatest at Boise State is, uh, and it's not him. It's definitely uh, probably Drimmick or, or D. Marks or Tanaka Beard. We'll, we'll get some – we'll ask him that. So. All right. I'll see you guys. Thanks, 12. Appreciate it. There he is. There's the man. What's up, Berto? What's happening, Deggy? How are you? Man, I'm great, man. I'm great. I'm like, uh, I'm like Omar Stanley. I'm blessed. You know, that's a great way to put it. Uh, so I want to get right into it. You know, we've already had two games so far. Um, what do you, what do you think so far of the of the first two games? Um, I, I, I think good, man. I think, I think it's been good. Um, I was very, very excited and very impressed with, um you know, um, the way that we played, uh, especially this last Sunday, um, just because, um, San Francisco is a really good team. I mean, yeah. they're a really good team and, and we knew they were going to be a good team and they're going to even be better. And so I think they're going to be a team that's going to, you know, definitely help our reputation. That win is going to, is going to go, um, it's going to be big for us. So, um, I was impressed, um, this last weekend and we didn't by, by any mean play perfect. We got a lot of stuff that we can shore up. I think it's early season stuff, but it was a, it was an impressive win. I think for us to start the season out, um, first game, uh, still kind of fi figuring out the kinks of everybody playing together. Um, it was good. It was good. It was good. It was a good start. We, and we need it. We need it going on to this, uh, going into this uh, gauntlet of a of a schedule we got on the road here so absolutely is, is there any way you can turn your camera sideways get your phone to fill the screen better there is you that go better? that's perfect is that yes so uh okay are you excited for this upcoming road trip because i think this is you know probably one of the hardest road trips in boise state history you could almost say so you excited for it the challenge that it can bring for us Man, this has got to be. I mean, I'm 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 with you. I'm trying. To, I was trying to think back, and I was trying to think about, you know, even um, you know some of the years that um, you know coaches trying to get people going, or even back when um, you know we we our program was not at the level it is now. We had to get a lot of buy games. You know, you had to go and, and get buy games. I mean, I think one year, um, you know, one of our years, I think we played. UCLA, um, Indiana, Gonzaga, somebody else in the same year. I, I still don't think that um, those those, um, those years was as difficult as what we got uh, the task that we have at hand. So I am very excited about um, this this trip. I'm very excited about going to Orlando. Um, for people that don't know, it's like the pickleball capital of the world. So um, you know that, that's good. <laughs> you know I'm looking forward to it. What when did you get into pickleball? I have to ask because you know it, it's growing a lot now. Um, I've played a little bit when I was younger in like middle school PE and it's in our PE classes, but when did you really get to start, you know, playing? Man, just like like towards the end of like quarantine, really. Um, 
uh, like when we used to coach Hoop Dreams, me and Brian DeFerris, um, um, former Boys State Bronco, we would be coaching and there would be a lot of old people playing pickleball at our gym at the home court and we would see them all the time. And he and I both played ping pong a lot and we love ping pong. We used to watch him play like, man, one of these times we're, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to play with them. We're going to play with them, not realizing that we had no idea what we were doing. And those old people would make us run around like chickens with our head cut off because they're just hitting lines and putting it where they want to go. Um, and uh, during the quarantine, like I said, we would do like go outside and do workouts with, you know, our kids and stuff. And then one day BD was like, Hey man, I, I went and played pickleball at this park and you need to come. And I went and like one time, and then I was hooked, and then we both were hooked, and we've been we've been playing ever since. Who is like your your best pickleball partner? Like out of all the people and boys that you normally play with, like who's who's your go to partner? Well, BD is because um, he's really really good, but we but we don't actually play good together though. <laughs> we're like we're like we're we're like burns and durie of, of pickleball uh, we just, we yeah, just, yeah. yeah we just we just we just argue all the time and you know and just do you know crazy stuff but he he's he's he yeah he's my go-to partner i mean we play the most together and end up playing and, and he is really good um oh man i don't know i mean if i had like a go-to like to say like who i play the best with i don't know it's probably it's probably i, I don't know man that's hard to say it's hard to say. Um, uh, there's a guy in town. His name is Daryl Spivey. Who's really, really good. Like he's really good. Like I'm not like on his level. Lot, there's, he's he's one of the better players in the valley, honestly. So I like playing with him because he's so good. It makes me it makes me look better than 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 um, than what I really am. <laughs> Absolutely. Lisa's asking uh, what you're in charge of, like within the staff. Uh, player development. If if we want to say that, I I just you know. Uh, it's funny people ask that question all the time and i mean obviously we have some roles but we were kind of a get in where you fit in staff you know everybody just kind of you know gets in where they fit in and, and get stuff in but i mean i guess if there's one it, it would be it would be the player development and you know handling the personnel and matchups and doing all that stuff so uh your nephew rj keen commented <laughs> uncle Berto looks like a bigger version of john legend How okay, do you mean that? Okay, Ron. I appreciate the I appreciate the mention, though. We want uh, we want to be specific about who you look like. Uh, Kareem's asking, um, "What's your favorite NBA memory uh, or some stories that you can share?" Um, Kareem, the dream, huh? Yeah, I love that. God, favorite NBA memory. Um. Man, I had a lot of them. I'm trying to think of maybe what's favorite is. Um, I mean, obviously, just hearing your name called. Um, you know, having my name called by Adam Silver was pretty, pretty phenomenal memory. Um, uh, first time I played against Scottie Pippen and got him to bite him a shot fake and, you know, scored on him. That was, that was, that was a, that was a really cool moment. I'm trying to think about what my favorite is. Uh, the, you know, playing with LeBron his rookie year was a, just a whole, it was a circus. So that was like a crazy deal, but, but that that's memorable my favorite moment um oh you know what honestly probably my favorite moment ever uh, i was working out in, in in phoenix and i was uh we were in the weight room and i and i heard growing up i was a huge huge 76ers fan um <clears throat> dr day dr j is my all-time favorite <clears throat> nba player ever um and then um charles barkley was like my second you know growing up just because he just took over and uh, I hear a booming voice. I'm lifting weights, and I hear a booming voice, and I recognize. I knew who it was right away. And I got to I got to meet Charles Barkley, who was like literally, like I said, he, you know, when I was in middle school and in high school, he was kind of my idol. So that that was probably uh, that was a great memory as well. Uh, Creamy Cold Boys, he's asking you to tell uh, your best <laughs> Rashid Wallace story. Now that's a good one because I got a, I got a, I, I got a, I've, I've got a lot of Rasheed Wallace stories. Uh, let's see what the best one is. Um, one of my favorites was um, he and uh, he and he and um, and um, Bonzi Wells used to uh, have a competition to see who could be um, the latest to practice but still on time. <laughs> like they would like stand outside the door and you know whoever 
was like 30 seconds, you know, on, but you had to be on time. If you weren't on time, you lost. Um, and he literally, he would come through the back door and the manager would be sitting there holding his practice Jersey. And he would come in with Tim, Tim, Timberland boots on, um, like gray sweats and like, a Portland zoo, uh, fun run 5k t-shirt and grab his Jersey and go on the court and smoke everyone. <laughs> like he was, he was absolutely that good. That talented. Um, you know, I don't know what my, like, yeah, he, he there was a lot of stuff, man. Um, he used to call me Rook, Rook, hey, Rook, hey, Rook. Actually, and then he started, then he changed. Then he started calling me Robbie. And no one's ever called me Robbie. He started calling me Robbie. And so finally, like one time, I just popped off and I was like, see, my name's not Robbie. And so he said, okay, you get your choice. It's either Robbie or Rook. Which one do you want? And so I just threw my hands up like, okay, man, I'll just take whatever you give me. So, yeah, she was cool. So uh, that's very cool. I, I never realized you played with Rashid and been around him that I'm sure that's you know quite an interesting thing to have a guy show up 10 15 seconds before practice actually starting because <laughs> that stuff doesn't really fly anymore especially in, especially for our team like we're all a bunch of guys that like to show up early and get shots up yeah. and just be ready to go and I don't, I don't feel like coach rice would like us to do that at least at least I don't think right no, nah, I don't. I don't think Coach Rice would appreciate that very much. But you know, I guess it's a different story when you're, you know, you're making whatever sixty million a year, and you can put your, you can put Timberlands on and still dunk on everybody and run faster than everybody and make shots. He he was an incredible talent. Like he's literally probably the most incredible talent I've ever seen in my life. It was, it was impressive. Like we had fast dudes on our team, Damon Stoudemire, and like we had fast dudes, and we didn't do a lot of conditioning. But like if anybody got like on the line and said run like and we'll put it Rashid would beat everybody everybody that's incredible just like having a guy who can just kind of show up and just beat everyone in a race and beat everyone out in the court you know i wish i had some of that talent where you can just show up and bang you're ready to go i, I gotta get warmed up now but uh i do want to ask you like going going a little bit in your past like how did you end up at Boise State as a player? Because obviously you're, you're a Hall of Fame inductee. You're a, a legend here. Um, how did you end up at Boise State as a player? Um, well, I went to University of Washington out of high school, um, and I played there with my friend my freshman year, um, and actually started the year off playing, you know, quite a bit and had some minutes. And I had, you know, some promise as far as who I was, but but um, I was definitely a knucklehead. I was a really immature um, kid who just had a lot of stuff going on, um, you know, in life, baggage of life that I, I just wasn't um, equipped with handling at that time. And so I decided to transfer. And um, I, I thought the best thing for me at that time was just to get as far as away from home as I could. Um, I just kind of, I guess, assumed that, you know, if I got away, then then those distractions would go away. Um, not really realizing that it was obviously me. So I went to Midland, Texas, and I went to Midland. I was there in the summer for about two and a half months. That didn't go well. Um, again, just a lot of different circumstances, but mostly just me not being able to handle, um, you know, real life stuff. And uh, then I transferred. I went to CSI. I was at College of Southern Idaho. Um, and I was at College of Southern Idaho for the first semester. Um, I didn't play in any games. And I ended up leaving there. Again, life circumstances, you know, got me to where I just couldn't handle it. And I ended up going home. And while I was at home, I... Um, I enrolled in um, a local community college, Highline Community College, um, and um, was going to school there. Um, I was lucky enough to have some positive influences. Um, you know, my, my wife now was my girlfriend at the time. I met her when I was at Boise State. And uh, her and then my, my high school coach had got uh, an assistant job at Boise State that year. And so, you know, due to them just kind of, you know, sit me down and being like, hey, man, you're at a crossroads. You need to get this stuff together. Um, you need to figure out, you know, what you're going to do. And uh, both of them was just like, look, you might not ever play basketball again, but at least just finish your education, you know, get your AA degree. At least you got something. And so I paid to go to school at Highline. And then after I finished my degree and I got it completely done, my high school coach who was at Boise State called me and was just like, hey, 
you know, I, I wanted to make sure that you were willing to, you know, at least, you know, this stuff mattered and care because it just looked like you were, you know, on a downward spiral. And um, I believe that I can I can get the head coach um, here at Boise State to um, convince him that, you know, you're going to be a quality player here and, and somebody good for the community. You know, do you want to come here? And at that point, all the schools that were recruiting me had, you know, lost me. Nobody cared about me anymore. I, I really didn't know what I was going to do. And so I was lucky enough, fortunate enough, that my high school coach, um, Ed Boyce, who was a, a, a huge mentor to me, I mean, I mean, not just basketball, but just life itself, um, he, uh, he, he really did. Like, he, he really, you know, was, was part of my saving grace and um, got me to Boise State. And, and, you know, and I came and I got here. And, uh, you know, the rest was, as they call it, history. Uh, Cream says you should get a refund on your Wi-Fi bill this month. You're kind of – a little spotty. Not gonna. Not gonna lie to you. Oh, am I? Am I killing it? Oh, it that sucks. sounds good. It's just the the video itself. You're kind of. It's kind of spotty here and there. Man, that sucks. I wonder why. Oh, and, and my Wi-Fi is really good, so it's probably not that. You know what it probably is? It's probably I got low stuff. Let me see if I can plug in. Damn, that sucks. Diggy, I'm killing the show. Oh, you're good. You that was a good. I enjoy always listening to how you came up, and you know you've told the story to our team before and it's always really inspiring just how you know you just made things work and you know you just had to you had a crossroads and you chose the right path and uh really thankful to have you you know on this team and as a part of this team and just have you you know as a boise state legend so um shane's asking you now how old were you the first time you dunked Oh my goodness. Uh that just depends on what we're talking about. Are we talking about like in a regulation 10 foot hoop or a nerf or a nerf hoop or uh <laughs> or you know a, a makeshift basket. I mean I I remember when we were when I was in like shoot man, I think seventh grade or, or eighth grade, we used to like jump off of the wall. Like there was like like there was a hoop and then the wall was next to we would, it was like a yeah. like a wrestling mat. We would like jump off the wall and then prepare ourselves up and and dunk. Um but I, I mean as far as like in a real game, I, I think I probably got my first dunk in a real game probably my sophomore year in high school, I think. I, I don't I don't remember. Well I didn't play my freshman year because I was academically ineligible. So it definitely wasn't, you know, unless it was like in a summer league game or something like that or an AU game. I, I don't remember. I, I know I thought I could, but it probably wasn't until uh... <laughs> Keen is a fool. That's the first one I caught. Oh, boy. Uh, yeah. So I, I would probably say my sophomore year was probably the first time in a game that I, that I dunked. So that's, that's very cool. Uh, Jordan's asking you, if you had to play one on one versus another coach in the Mountain West right now, uh, who is going to give you a hard time, and why is it Lex? <laughs> and why is it Lex? <laughs> um, I, I, I mean, <laughs> I, I, I don't. I, I, I just. I don't. I don't even know if. It depends. It depends on what it is. If we're playing one on one in the post. Uh, Shoot, man, I, I I don't I don't have a have a chance against uh, against uh, Mr. Williams from UNLV. Um, like, I mean, if we're playing on the perimeter, um, I don't know. I it, honestly, I was never really a great one on one player to, to be honest with you. So, I mean, I, I I you know, I mean, I I was I was fine, but give me some give me give me some screens and some movements and transition and post ups and a little bit of everything. I do well, so I don't know, but. I'm gonna put my money on myself though, anyways. <laughs> That's how you always are. You always put your money on yourself and you always back it up. Uh Ryan's asking, uh, what did you learn as a coach from coaching hoop dreams that transfers to college coaching? Um, everything. Uh, everything. Um I, I think you know, doing running hoop dreams for so many years. Um, people don't realize that how much um, time and, and energy and how many hats you have to wear as a uh, AAU director. I mean, you're coach, but you're also the ops, but you're also the equipment manager, but you're also the scheduler, but you're also the recruiter and you're also, you know, you do so much. And so I think for me, um, the hoop dreams that the, the, it was just learning so much um, by doing just a little bit of everything um, help me to 
not only be able to carry over and do you know do those tasks here but it helped me to um be like appreciate what everyone else does and really appreciate like everyone has a role and has their spot and then you know when you, everybody's doing it at a, at a high volume they can come together like voltron and, and and conquer the world so that's very cool yeah um as we're kind of wrapping up here we got a couple more questions uh robbie's asking what's your favorite what's your best memory of and or with tyson so <laughs> my best memory with tyson i mean it's a daily thing with tyson uh, best memory is is tough because you know obviously I, I would like to say you know some of the things that you know he's done on the floor but but really um for me with, with tyson it's just the everyday um approach it, it really does i mean he's one of the guys that kind of reminds me of um you know myself when i was in college and how i approached it um but but tyson's mentality is even it's even different it's unique it's different than mine so just every day it's refreshing to be around someone that is not only like so meticulous and serious about his craft and his approach but also do it in a way that's just so fun loving and enjoyable because there's a lot of people uh, you know people out there that have different personalities and a lot of times when you deal with individuals that kind of quote unquote type a they can kind of be a little bit stiff and, and 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 rigid and um tyson is not that way it's it's it's, it's enjoyable every day to come and just makes me smile so i, I would say that my best memory is just is is every day every day seeing him and experiencing experiencing this journey with them i appreciate that bro it's always fun to be at practice and always you're always giving me advice about certain things like defensively or what you see different ways and get better at cuts so I really do appreciate that. Um, Kareem saying you need an NIL deal with CenturyLink. Um, and Keen saying you're behind on your, your Wi-Fi bills. <laughs> oh man. Well, RJ, you better make sure that you that you get some get get some more rebounds and 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 uh stay in the stance and defend a little bit better so I can <laughs> so I can get paid and, and pay my bills, brother. That's funny. Uh, Kareem, hook me up, man. If you know somebody from CenturyLink, I'll take the NIL. Call Shamburg Williams, former Boise State player and coach. He works for them. I need that for sure. I appreciate it. Uh, Kareem says, all jokes aside, really enjoyed the stories and words of wisdom. So <laughs> uh, so uh, last question for you, Berto. It's the question I ask all of our guests. It's my signature question. I think you might have mentioned him earlier, but just want to make sure it's the, the right guy I'm thinking of. But uh, who in your life has made the biggest impact on you besides your your close family and friends? Oh, besides close family and friends? Yeah. Um, yeah, definitely Ed Boyce. Definitely yeah. Ed Boyce, my high school coach and college coach. And um, he actually also, um, he, he and I were, you know, we were co-founders of the Hoop Dreams. He he, he, he coached around Hoop Dreams with me. And so I, I would say, uh, you know, he, he, there's, there's, yeah, there's no doubt in my mind that it would be him. Yeah, I figured when you were talking about him earlier, but just had to make sure. And uh, yeah. he needs to come to like where? Where's he at now? I, I want to meet. I want to meet him. Yeah, we got to get him out. We got to see if we can get him out. He's uh, yeah, he's, he lives here in Boise, but uh, he, he's kind of um, you know, once his kids stop playing, he, he's he's kind of uh, uh, I don't know, maybe quote unquote nomad now. Like he just he goes and. He, he enjoys the outdoors. He goes and just hikes and kind of helps his wife with, uh, you know, her uh, her real estate and and just just kind of watches everything from afar. <laughs> so uh, we'll see if we can get him out. He doesn't get out too too often, like I said, to anything other than, you know, he loves to go out and hike. But we'll see if we can get him out and, and come check you guys out. Okay, that sounds good. So appreciate you coming on, Berto. Uh, we got one more guest to come on. So if you want to say anything to Sam, let me know. Any questions you want me to ask Sam? Sam. Sam, I am. That's my guy. I don't like shoot, man. I just just keep tell Sam. I just said keep keep bringing the TikTok, uh, the TikTok uh, uh, stuff, man. Like you got, he's got great, great, great products. And so, I appreciate you having me on, Tyson. It was really cool. Um, uh, obviously, I know you're still getting to know me. You didn't know me well enough to to know that 20 minutes wasn't enough for me because I, yeah, I, I know. know the way I talk. So, <laughs> but I, yeah. I really it was good time, man. I appreciate it. I've been Thanks waiting. for coming on, Berto. Zero. All right. Thanks, Tyson. All right, Sam, I am. Have a good one. I uh, want to talk about Lean Feast really quick. Um, they sponsor of the show. I'm a really big fan. Just going in, getting my 10 meals. It makes it way easier to, to have meals ready to go. Just two minutes in the microwave. You pick a carb, you pick a protein, pick a veggie. It's ready to go. 
Um, I highly recommend their breakfast. You can go to the breakfast hash, egg bites, and turkey sausage. That's my go-to. So uh, check out Lean Feast when you're in Meridian, uh, whenever you're out there. So uh, now we're on to our final guest, probably the most uh, – I think you have the most followers on the team now uh, with all your TikToks and stuff. So I just want to welcome on Sam Winter. Sam, thank you for joining the show. What's up, Tyson? Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Yeah, I want to ask you about your your recent Instagram fame. You've jumped up. I looked before the show. You broke eleven thousand uh, followers. You know how how did you make that happen? Yeah, so I've been I've just been posting some TikToks for a while, and I I moved them all over to Reels, like Instagram Reels, and some of them actually ended up doing really well, and especially the basketball charging video that that had over like two million. So. I don't know. Just a bunch of people decided to follow me from that, and I just exploded. Yeah, let, Dom's asking. Let, let's uh, let's talk about the charging basketballs because I don't know if the, the whole population knows like what they are. And um, you you obviously made a video about it, so you're more knowledgeable about than um, about me. Yeah, so they're uh, they're called shot tracker. It's basically like there's like chips inside of our basketballs, and we all have our little chips that we put in in our socks or on our shoes and so basically if you uh, shoot with one of those balls it like tracks it with these things we have in on the ceiling of our gym it just tracks it and then you can go on the little app and like see your shooting percentage and your shot chart and where you're shooting from so it's pretty cool don't do you like it using it a lot i enjoy it um it's just nice to you know, know exactly where you're shooting from, where you're shooting the ball well from, you know, how far you run in the game. I mean, uh, I know the the managers had like a, a meeting with them and found out a whole bunch of information that Shot Tracker does a lot more than we ever thought. So I think it's super cool that we're able to, ha- to have that. So uh, Benson is asking, are you guys going to beat Clemson this Sunday? Yes, sir. That's the plan. You know, they're they're a good team. It's going to be a good test for our first uh, first like real road road test this year so i'm excited for it excited for that that in in the orlando part of it or part of our trip yeah it's gonna it's gonna be a good good trip coming up for sure that the clemson game and then three really good games against some good teams coming up so it's gonna be a fun uh fun next couple of weeks for sure have you ever been to disney world i have never i've i've never been to florida i've been to disneyland but Never, never Florida or Disney World. Have you? I've never been to Florida or Disney World or Disneyland for that matter. So it'd be cool to experience that and, you know, be a part of a super cool tournament and, you know, have this great East Coast swing that'll really get us prepared for, you know, some of our conference games. So uh, after two games of the season, what do you think of our team so far? You know, what are some positives that you've really seen from us and um, what do you expect us to do this upcoming weekend? Yeah, after the two games, I've been just excited about the team. Uh, just, I've been really, we've been looking forward to just finally playing games, especially with a lot of, we have a lot of new guys this year. So just seeing how everybody works with each other. And I think the first two games went well. Our, our defense is, is getting better every day. And that's our goal to try to get better at. But uh, yeah, I'm excited. We haven't been able to, we haven't been our best shooting team, but I know that we know we have lots of good shooters so that's that will even out for coming up but yeah well, as coach always says the the percentages will correct themselves so uh lisa's exactly. asking do we get to do something fun while we're there um honestly i have no idea i'm sure they have something planned as probably a, a surprise for us but you never know with our staff what do you think yeah i mean there are rumors that we may go to uh disney world but we'll we'll see we'll have to see we'll have to I have to wait and see. Uh, Chase is saying you should be a starter and the best t- player on the team. Uh, I agree. You should see him get get buckets on the scout team. So I actually wanted to talk to you about that. I don't know if people really realize like um, what you do for our team, and I want you to kind of give them a little bit of insight on on what your day to day is with practice and just being a part of our team. Yeah. So I'm a, I'm a walk on for the team. So I. Uh, help out help out on the scout team and what the scout team is basically during the season especially before our coming leading up to our games we scout the other team and we maybe run like six six or so plays that they run 
and we run it against the starters and the rest of the team. So basically we just try to get the team ready for the next game by kind of just pretending to be the other team, you know, wearing like the same numbers they'd wear, running their plays. So that's that's kind of what my my role on the team is. And I, I love doing it. It's, it's fun going against you guys and just just being able to go out there and play. You I have to be honest, you're you're definitely one of the best walk ons anyone could ever ask for. You know, uh, you go in each day, you don't complain, you, you do your job, you always have a smile on your face, you always bring everyone up. And so it's been great having you on the team and can't wait to, you know, get you in some more games this year because my mom texted me today and said, I remember the Tusk stat about how you're 10 and 0 when you play. We are 10 and 0 when we play. So we got to get you in more games this year. That's what it sounds like. Yeah, shout out to uh, Jay Tusk for digging that that hard hitting stat up. But I know I know BJ said last last show that if I scored in the Vanguard game, I would have been having on the show. But unfortunately, I missed a three. So, but thank you. I appreciate you guys for still having me on. Absolutely, it, it looked good from the bench. I, I promise you, I it looked so good. Perfect rotation, yeah. just a little short, but you did end up getting the rebound, get a hockey assist to Keen to Mo for the dunk. Yeah, um, JD's assist. asking me who's the best walk-on shooter best walk-on shooter that's definitely got to be my boy vince i mean that guy get him in the corner he'll shoot nine for ten from three so he's he's definitely the best shooter uh cream said uh sam i pulled seven of your jackson's basketball cards last year can i get you to sign them for me uh because you're definitely not reselling on ebay kareem i got you bro just, just hit me up but yeah don't don't resell them on ebay those things are priceless no, those things will be worth a lot because the Sam Winters signature is going to be worth a lot with all your TikTok fame coming up. Nah. It's just starting. Talk a little. Well, actually, now that I think of it, talk a little about your your recent deal with uh, co clothing company. You got to let the people know. Yeah. So my my first official NIL deal was with uh, American Eagle. I promoted some like uh, this is the twenty four seven collection, it's just like active wear, but. Shout out American Eagle, put, made a little TikTok for him, so that was pretty cool to to do. That was super cool. I, I, when I saw, it, I was like, "Man, Sam's getting big time now because he's getting American Eagle hitting him up." I'm sure you have more companies probably hitting you up now that you've posted that video. Like, oh man, people gotta jump on the Sam Winter train. Yeah, maybe we might we'll have some things coming soon, but we'll see. We'll see. We gotta stay tuned. We'll we'll be on TikTok or Instagram. Uh, I don't know. T TikTok is kind of slow for me right now, so I, I kind of transitioned to all the Instagram, but we'll uh, we'll see. Okay, well we'll keep an eye out for it. Uh, Sam twenty two winter on Instagram mm -hmm. for all the people watching that want to follow him. Yeah. Uh, Nate Wilder is asking, uh, "What do you think of my mask?" Oh, I think it's super cool. You know, everybody said he looked like Batman, and I agree. The the black mask we. When he first broke his nose, we were all just like joking around, like, "Oh, you got to get a, you got to get a black mask, you know, like be like LeBron and all those guys." But when it, did you know it was gonna be black? Um. Well, they told me like after they did the the face scan. So for people that don't know, uh, I got it from a, a company called I think it was Project Three D, and they took like a scan of my face with a phone and measured like the width of my head like this way, and then they. Got it made just from that, and um, they told me it was going to be a black polymer because it's like the strongest material they have, and it's one of the only materials that's like legal by the NCAA. There's a bunch of rules behind it, so that's how I ended up getting a black mask. I didn't really have a choice in it, so uh, there you go. Yeah, it's, it's tough. I know when you uh, came out of the starting lineups, everybody on the team put the put the mask on with you. So oh yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. We got to give a shout out to Sam. Sam's our handshake guy this year. Um, and yeah. we have a nice little handshake. Uh, why don't you tell tell the people about it? Yeah. So, Tyson and I, being from uh, Washington, we're huge Seattle Mariners fans. You know, we try to watch almost every game we can. So, uh, we took inspiration from Eugenio Suarez, who was the third baseman. So, when he gets a base hit, he does, You'll if you go to the game, you'll see me and Tyson do it. But he does a handshake with the first base coach, so that's where we we Tyson came up with the idea to get it from there. Yeah, 
uh, I don't think. Do you think this is the Lou Major from the football team, or do you think this is uh, uh, someone else? I don't think so. Okay. Well, I appreciate it, Lou. Uh, Sam, I want to talk a little bit about uh, your growing up and from Montesano and kind of how you ended up at Boise State. So kind of walk us through your childhood and uh, how you ended up at Boise State. Yeah. Uh, so I can't, I grew up in a little small town in Western Washington called Montesano. Tyson, what, what's your, uh, what's your opinion? You've been there. So what do you think of Montesano? I enjoy Montesano. Um, there's some nice golf courses in the surrounding area. Shout out Salish Cliffs. That was a very yep. fun weekend. Um, you're, you're very close to Seattle, so you can go to a lot of Mariners games, Kraken games, hopefully an NBA team here pretty soon. But uh, yeah. shout I'd give it a nice little – Sonics. Yeah, shout out to Sonics. Um, I'll give it a, a solid 8 out of 10. 8 out of 10. Yeah, it's a, it's a small town. It's got like four or 5,000 people in it, one, one fast food restaurant. So growing up, going to high school, it was, it was, a, lot, it was a lot different than probably the the average experience just because you knew everybody which looking back i love i love that aspect and i'm glad i grew up where i did but so i went to um, montesano high school the only high school there uh played football basketball and track in high school and so by how i got to here how i got here to boise was uh actually first i want to say i've always been a boise state football fan that's something a lot of people don't know Either you're Wazoo or UW, but I was a Boise State fan. I was, in fact, I was at the, uh, I think it was 2011, when TCU beat Boise State on a missed field goal. So I was very disappointed after that game. But how I got here, I was planning, I always played basketball, my favorite sport. Uh, in senior year of football, I tore my ACL, unfortunately. So I didn't have a senior year of basketball. But I was able to get uh, kind of in contact through like my high school coach. I was able to like email Coach Burns, so that's how I kind of got within got in the program, and I just kept going and texting him, the bothering him. Then finally, about August of that year of going in the freshman year, uh, he basically called me and said they had an extra spot to be a walk on in. Of course, I said yes and been here ever, here ever since and don't regret anything. Absolutely. Uh, I don't think a lot of people knew that you uh, tore your ACL, but just to see you kind of recover from that and you know be such a big part of the team and continue to keep improving your dunk package and warm-ups, it's been, it's been great to see. <laughs> yep, that's, you know, warm-ups, my time to shine, so. You're getting up there, so uh, – BSU Bill asked, who's the funniest guy on the team? Need to get that cleared up. Uh, funniest guy on the team? I'd have to go with my my roommate, RJ Keene. He's he's a pretty funny guy. Would you agree? I, I would definitely agree. I, I don't know how you live with him sometimes. He's a little over the top. But uh, um, he's RJ saying that the Dodgers got Shohei. I don't, I don't know if I believe that. Need some fact checks on that. Yeah, if anyone know. in the comments can fact check RJ Keen, that would be great. Thank you. Um, but uh, I do want to ask you. Oh, Robbie says uh, that's not an easy, easy injury to come back from. Well done, Sam. Uh, we got a coach. Um, all right. Well, we'll we'll be there, coach. <laughs> Is that the real Leon Paul Rice? I don't know. It's, it's got a good picture of him. Looks like his headshot and it's the right name. I don't. I guess I'll have to end the show a little early. Hopefully, hopefully not. I'm mean, gonna have to give him a call really quick and make sure that we really don't have practice tonight because I really don't want to go back. I'm already settled in for the night. Um, mm -hmm. But I do want to ask you, like, did did your parents have any influence on you going to Boise State or is that always like you know growing up a BSU football fan like you always wanted to go that go here yeah so the reason I was a BSU fan is because my mom actually played basketball here at Boise State back in uh, the not early 90s so uh, that's why I've been a Boise State fan just wanted to come here because of her 
and it's pretty cool to kind of there's like a picture of her kind of outside the uh outside the training room a little bit so it's cool to see that yeah i think that's super cool that your your mom played here and now your sister's actually an athlete here too a little track athlete so i think it's really cool that you and your sister both division one athletes at your mom's alma mater i think that's uh super cool and um really happy you guys are here so um if you guys have more questions get them in the comments for sam uh looks like coach is roasting rj in the comments it's uh <laughs> it's quite something in here so um sam i do want to ask you this uh what what are you looking forward to for your senior year like any games in particular um you know march madness like what do you what's your uh what are you excited for uh i'm, I'm just excited for it all i just want to live in the moment just kind of take it in but this being my last year uh, of course excited to get back to the tournament you know you've you're two for two so i want to make it three for three uh just any specific games i'd probably just say i mean there's a lot in conference play pretty much every game is is going to be good in conference play so probably just excited for the whole season basically yeah uh, I agree. I think every conference game is going to be really good. And um, I think there's, you know, a lot of talent in the Mountain West. And I think every game is, is going to be close. And that's what that's what makes the Mountain West so fun. So uh, Chase is asking, why are you number 22? Well, that's actually a funny story because so I got here when I was a freshman. Uh, I joined the team a little later into the season, like September or October. And I got my gear. And had number twenty two on it, so just I just accepted twenty two, and it's a great number, and it's it's my number now. So that's how I kind of got uh, that number. But weren't you weren't you always like number twelve in high school too? I, I was yes, I was number twelve. But as we know, twelve is twelve. So yeah, you're, there's no way. Uh, but that's all right. There's no way you're taking that number. Uh, coach has said that. Uh, when you're over Keen in the depth chart, so maybe uh, Keen gets demoted to scout team. Sam, <laughs> Sam promoted. Yeah. We'll have to appreciate it, Coach. Yeah, thanks, Coach. Uh, we can't wait to get Sam in the rotation on on Sunday. Yep. So, I don't know how Keen's gonna feel about that. Yeah, I don't know. It might cause some uh, roommate tension that I hopefully don't have to come over and, and dispute. So, uh, Sam, I do have one more question for you before we let you go. Um, it's a question I ask everyone. It's my signature question. Um, who in your life has made the biggest impact on you besides your close family and friends? Well, besides my parents or my family, I would say uh, my AU coach, Mark Shrek, and I would have to go with uh, Leonard Barnes, who is now actually the coach of uh, uh, Montesano basketball but those two guys just they were just always there for me and helped me get where i where i'm at today as a basketball player and they're, they always support me and i'm just very glad that they're in my lives growing up so that's awesome thanks for sharing uh one last question in the comments it's from uh, jd what position did you play in football so, i was a uh, i was a receiver on offense and outside linebacker on defense very very solid so uh sam just want to thank you for coming on the show really happy to you know get you on here and get you the love that you deserve and so uh thanks for jump, jumping on and we'll see you tomorrow appreciate it tyson thanks for having me on see you tomorrow wow great show man yeah it was uh the comment section was very very good i guess we got coach in here and rj and Step chart issues. I don't. I don't know. It's. I just sent. Uh, I just sent Leon a screenshot of some of those comments. I'm waiting to him. I'm waiting for him to write back and say that that is indeed him. But uh, he says, oh. "See you. T see you tonight yeah, for that 9 p.m. practice." I gotta, I gotta get going here pretty soon. <laughs> we had Lou, Lou Major in here too. <laughs> yeah, we had some. We had some good good names in this here. This was by far the best, uh, the most liveliest chat that we've had. Oh man, we had fake fake. Uh, 
Oh, man. Yeah, this says, uh, Robbie says, I think that's the best show yet. That was fantastic. Yeah, Tyson, you went about an hour and 10 minutes by yourself, man. That's, I mean, if you told me that on my first episode, I'd be able to do it. I would have told you you're crazy. So uh, it's been a long time coming. And I'm, I'm glad I'm getting more comfortable with this because uh, it makes the show a lot easier once you get comfortable with, you know, being able to have conversations with other people and stuff like that. So appreciate that. <laughs> so, the Lou Major in the chat. Yeah, I, I, I didn't want to like point it out because, you oh. know, obviously. <laughs> It is what it is. <laughs> what uh, what what do you make of uh, this week, man? You guys heading out on Friday, right, to Clemson and big game on Sunday, and uh, uh, it's gonna be a fun, uh, you know, and it's a big game too, man. You got that gauntlet down there in in uh, Orlando. You really you want to start the trip off, obviously, with a with a win. I mean, that's gonna be a a big game, and and it's obviously a long trip and not a place you guys are used to going. Uh, what do you make of uh, this weekend? I think it'll be a great challenge for us because. Um, we don't really get to play on the East Coast all that much. I mean, we obviously have the Thanksgiving tournaments every year. Um, but to play a true road game uh, against a really good AC ACC opponent that was just on the bubble last year, uh, I think they're going to be a really good test for us. And uh, I think we're really excited for that matchup. And then the Orlando trip itself will be great with just how many spectacular teams there are and be a great tournament for us. So a great East Coast trip and uh, can't wait to get down there. Well, uh Fingers crossed. No, no, everything goes well with my flights. I'm hoping to, I think I'm going to be the first person in history, Tyson, that has watched a football game on a Saturday night in Logan, Utah, and a basketball game Sunday afternoon in Clemson, South Carolina. If I can, if I can make it, I've got the, the football games at five o'clock in Logan. It'll end about eight 30 and I've got a uh, midnight uh, red eye to Charlotte uh, after the game down in Salt Lake. So I'm going to attempt to, uh, get to Salt Lake and fly to Charlotte, get in at like six in the morning. I think it's about a two hour drive over to, over to Clemson and I'm looking forward, man. I've uh, never been there and I think it's going to be a, a great atmosphere on a Sunday afternoon and it's a big game, a quad one road game. And uh, I'm looking forward to being there for the uh, pre and post game shows for uh, BNN. And it's going to be a lot of fun, man. And then heading down to Orlando and, and that's going to be an awesome tournament, man. I mean, you guys, you've been in a couple of nice tournaments your two years here, but uh, six of the eight teams in the tournament, um, you know, played in the NCAA tournament last year. You have a team that was in the final four. Um, I mean, it, this is a, I know Maui Invitational kind of gets the billing, but I, this has got to be one of the top tournaments uh, in the preseason here. Absolutely. I think it's probably Maui Invitational than the Orlando tournament. I think obviously Maui has a lot of the big names, Gonzaga, Purdue, I think Tennessee's in there as well. And you go down the list and then there's our tournament with FAU, Texas A&M, VCU, Iowa State, Virginia Tech, us, Butler. And then there's one, one more, I can't think of the name off the top of my head because they're on the opposite side of the bracket, but um, just an incredible tournament with a lot, a lot of really good teams. So I'm uh, really excited for it. Yeah, JD, I'm literally going to finish the football game at 830, uh, do the interviews with uh, Coach Danielson and the players, and then uh, hit the road right away. We're going to be doing the post game show, uh, maybe while I'm driving in the car down towards the airport, and then uh, it's just going to be a crazy night, and then uh, and then we're going to, uh, like I said, get there at 6 in the morning and be ready to go with the pregame show courtside, showing uh, Tyson and the folks uh, warming up on Sunday if I can make it. And I don't sleep on planes, and I'm not a huge – it's crazy, Tyson, for as much as I fly, I'm not a huge fan of flying. So uh, I, I will get uh, zero sleep on that flight, uh, for like four hours from Salt Lake to Charlotte, and uh, I will be on a probably like 30 hours of no sleep at uh, tip-off. But uh, – it's going to be a lot of fun. Coach Rice is asking how he subscribes. Your wife actually already subscribes, Leon. So you can uh, ask ask Robin uh, what the password <laughs> ask ask Robin what the password is, and you can log in there because uh, you got Robin's already a subscriber, which we're appreciative of. So uh, Chase Love hopes that you guys get into Maui someday. I know that's actually something they're working on behind the scenes. Uh, that would be that would be the the premier tournament, and I know that Mountain West has had I think UNLV, San Diego State in it in previous years, and I do know that is kind of the dream for for Boise State as well. Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping to get there. I mean, I, I remember growing up watching Gonzaga play in there. I mean, they won it, I think, my junior year of high school. I mean, watching them play against Duke in that title game was just incredible. And um, so, hope keep fingers crossed for that next year. But so uh, we got to focus on focus on the present this week. So, All right, well, appreciate it, Tyson. We got a 30-30 game, Kansas and Kentucky, uh, late in the first half. Tie game here in the uh, Champions Classic. So, uh, I will be uh, – Watching the second half of that, uh, looking forward to love early season big time basketball, and you guys will obviously be a part of that here Sunday, and then moving into uh, next week down there uh, in Orlando. I believe I don't know if we did we ever pick a date. It's sometime in mid December. Um, I forget if we picked a date yet, but it'll be uh, 
some point in mid December, right? Yeah, I don't I don't remember an exact day. I was actually thinking about that, and um, we'll we'll figure it out when the time comes. We'll we'll let everyone know, and uh, hoping to have another great uh, episode for you in December. I just jinxed it because Kentucky hit back to back threes and they're up six now. So, uh, but uh, yeah, it's it, great show, man. Seriously, this was uh, probably I think by far your your best show. And like I said, yeah, you went an hour plus, three guests, and we had great comments. Uh, appreciate all the comments tonight, man. The chat was going, and that that makes the show more fun and frankly easier when there's uh, things to talk about. We appreciate uh, Coach Rice and Lou Major and all the other folks that came in to hang out in the chat tonight. So. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh man that was great yeah it was uh as tech says uh, awesome show uh dom says who are you going for okay you're kentucky uh i don't really have a dog in the fire i just want to hope hope for a good game all right well if you want to come back on the show uh in a month from now we, we know who you'll be pulling for but uh, one of my roommates is a ku fan too i, hope you, I hope you heard when i said that too but. were those your roommates that you took the picture with uh, down in front of the court with the uh, yeah that was them yeah that was two of them so wow, that's pretty they, cool. They, they told me before the game, like, we got to get a picture with your Batman mask. I'm like, okay, I'll make sure to make that happen. So, well, hey, man, get go do some homework, uh, get some rest, get back to uh, whatever you got to do tonight. But uh, awesome stuff, seriously, man. Uh, thanks again, Idaho Central Credit Union, ICCU.com. You can check them out. The best in mobile e branch online banking. Uh, well, any of your banking needs, there's a branch pretty much on every corner, but the uh, easiest branch right there in your and right there in the palm of your hand. Uh, <laughs> Keenan Winter already at the practice facility. Tyson, you got to get going. <laughs> yeah, you got to get going. My keys are right here, so I can get you out. Night, you got thirty. Did you guys already practice today? Is this a two day? Yeah. yeah. Well, I guess I was a surprise two a day. I guess we had practice at one. So <laughs> some of the folks just coming in actually. <laughs> All right. Thank you to all the comments. Thank you guys for checking us out. Uh, Keen, and you know, appreciate your comments as well. Thanks to Max Rice for jumping on. Thanks to uh, Sam. Thanks to Birdo. Uh, a lot of great comments in here. That was by far one of our best shows, probably the best show. So uh, nice work, uh, Tyson. And uh, we'll see you uh, Sunday from Clemson, South Carolina. Looking forward to it, man. Everybody else have a great rest of your evening. We'll have Bronco Nation News Live tomorrow, 9 a.m. Uh, Johnny Ballgame and myself will be uh, talking football. We'll talk some basketball and uh, it's an interesting time, fun time in uh, Bronco Athletics. And again, 9 a.m. tomorrow, Bronco Nation News Live will be John Mallory and myself talking about it uh, as we get you set uh, for the football game on Saturday and the uh, basketball game on Sunday. Tyson, appreciate it, man. Thanks, everybody, for checking us out. Have a great rest of your evening. Idaho Central Credit Union presenting the Tyson Degenhart Show. My name's BJ Rains. He's Tyson Degenhart. And we'll talk to you later. Bronco Nation News Live, bronconationnews.com. <laughs>